Greetings, thrill seekers, music lovers, conversationalists all across the fruited plain. You are on Vaquero Radio, the Valley Student Station, and I am your guest, DJ Z. I am back here today. It is, well, it's not quite 5 o'clock yet. You have another hour to go if you're still at work. I, just, uh, I would love to have this drive home. But on further news, I am here behind, well, it's not the golden EIB mic, but I am behind a new mic. And it is for radio excellence. It is for excellence in broadcasting here. Uh, unfortunately, um, instead of just using half a brain, i got to use uh, my brain and like 10 other people behind me, especially the producer sitting here behind the window. You know, he, he, he does. Anyway, let's, let's continue on. All right, so we got a show for you. We're going to tone it down just a little today. Uh, i got a special show here for you, though, and I'll let you know why. It's still going to be rock and roll. We're still going to be rocking. We're just going to get back to the roots of it. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you doing? That, that was Fortunate Son by CCR, Credence Clearwater Revival. Another one, Bites of Dust by, of course, Queen. And Black Betty by Ram Jam. All right. Let me tell you something about that last song, Black Betty by Ram Jam. Very popular song. Uh, very old song. I think it's been remade uh, about two, three times. And that is a remake. The original person... Who sung that was Lead Belly. No, wait. Black Betty, Black Betty, here we go. I have it here. Yes, it was Lead Belly. Now, that being said, I have a particular theme here today. Lead Belly sung that song way back, way back when in the, uh, I believe it was about the 30s or so. Um, right after the birth of rock and roll, which is done by uh, Robert Johnson at the Crossroads. He sold his soul to the devil. And, uh, of course, uh, rock and roll was born, and uh, that's where we got it from today. It is Black History Month. So, in honor of that, we are playing these songs. Black Betty was done by Lead Belly. They called him Lead Belly. Uh, He was later accused of murder. He murdered uh, somebody. had to do over women. And, uh, well, somebody shot him. And uh, they shot him in the gut. He lived. He went on to have a musical career. And so uh, he lived, and uh, Robert Johnson, well, everybody laughed him down. That was way back in the 20s. He got laughed down, so they said, hey, you're horrible. Get out of here. And, uh, well, he took off, and a year later he came back playing chords and notes that nobody ever heard before. Thus was born the legend of Robert Johnson selling his soul over at the crossroads. Uh, Did he do it? I don't know. You tell me. Go ahead and comment on the Radio FX app. You'll find it over there. And just uh, look for Vaquero Radio. And, of course, hit that comment section. And uh, you'll be able to tell me whether you believe he did that or not. I can tell you. Well, yes, I can. I would say, yes, he did sell his soul there. Because about a year or two later, uh, I think he only recorded 20 songs or maybe even less. 18, 15 songs here. His, uh, all this is, is off of memory, by the way. I'd, uh, so I don't have the exact number of songs, but he didn't write very many songs. Uh, well, he did. He wrote a, quite a few songs, but he didn't record that many songs. And uh, lots of them is lost today to the uh, sands of time. Nobody can, can beat time. I wish I could, but there's no winning against time. So that's how rock and roll is born. We're kind of going to go through a history here. We're not going to have a bloody roots with metal. We're just going to have a uh, roots of rock here. I'll give you uh, all the information I can uh, off some of the songs I have. We're going to try to... uh, Unfortunately, this is a student station, so we, we pull our money together when we have something left over from the weekend after enjoying our favorite beverages. And uh, if we have any money left over, we pitch in, we buy songs, because copyright, we have to buy our songs. I can't just get here off of YouTube and sing this stuff, because copyright, those darn copyrights, yeah, I don't know who came up with that, but uh, somebody did, and somebody's making money off of it. And so we have to buy our songs, so I have a limited amount of of, uh, of, uh, songs here to play. But that being said... Black History Month, so we're going to go ahead. I'll tell you some more history and some of the songs that we have coming up, and uh, let's get this show on the road. I am DJ Z, 
with you here on the Vaquero Radio, the Valley Student Station. I hope you right now you're uh, checking down some of your favorite beverages. I know I'm, I am right now. Going to get an Uber to go home after this. And uh, it just enjoying the day. I, I'm all over the board today. But uh, let's see here. That first song you heard was, uh, oh, that was not fortunate song. That was 1999, of course, by Prince, Wait, White Line, and Mississippi Queen by Mountain. I had somebody here on the uh, Radio FX app, Fuck It Radio. Uh, Marie, she was mentioning that uh, Robert Johnson, he died at age 27. Uh, that whole thing that he sold his soul to the devil, there might be credence to that because uh, there's this thing called the 27 Club. We have had many uh, famous artists, Brian Jones, Alan Wilson, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, uh, Kurt Cobain. All these people have died at age 27. So I don't know, something about that crossroads, uh, something about, you know, the birthing of rock and roll. I know it's crazy. The funny thing is, it was not called rock and roll when it first came out. It was called Rhythm and blues, and uh, well, it black southern people made rock and roll, and uh, th- they're the ones that introduced it to everybody. They're the ones. Uh, uh, there was a big thing that nobody wanted to listen to rhythm and blues. They said, "Hey, don't listen, lo- you know, don't listen to rhythm and blues because that's." Uh, I'm just gonna come out and say it. They're like, "That's what black, that's what black people listen to." Why are we listening to this? Don't listen to rhythm and blues. Well, the problem was everybody listened to it because they thought it was awesome. They thought it was great. And the American community, or mainly the Anglo community, loved it. And they wanted more of it. So there was this guy by the name of Alan Freed. He was this famous uh, DJ way back then when people used to listen to radio. Yes, you would have to turn this dial on your radio. And and you turn the knob and, and there was this little line that went back and forth. And that's how you tuned your radio station and you had this big old giant knob for volume and it would make staticky noises and all this other kind of stuff for all you uh youngins out there don't know what a radio is but that's what it was like it was like pushing the button to go through uh your playlist i guess except with static in the middle so he came up with this idea he goes alan freed uh he said sometime in the 50s he's like hey why don't we call it rock and roll because rhythm and blues, that was kind of a, a, hey, you know, rhythm and blues. Hey, let's get some rhythm and blues down tonight. So uh, they kind of changed it to rock and roll, which ha- kind of has the same connotation. Hey, baby, let's rock and roll. So, uh, but that was Alan Freed. The thing is, what he did is that instead of saying, oh, you know, uh, all these crazy black artists. And let me tell you what, the the lyrics of the time were very, very, uh, uh how would you say it? Uh, they were very uh, like that song, Sweet Cherry Pie. And, if, you know, that sweet little thing, Make a Grown Man Cry. Of course, that's a song here sung by, uh, oh, man, Warrant. So, you know, you, you get the innuendos. There were lots of innuendos in those songs back then. Uh, so it, it was it was an art form. But Alan Freed, he's the one that decided, hey, let's call it rock and roll. And... Once we do that, we'll put everybody in ties and suits, and everybody will love it, and we'll play this rock and roll, and we'll just take all these songs that everybody's been listening to, and we're not going to give them any credits. So, you know, there were quite a few, lots of that happened back then, unfortunately, but this was the beginning of rock and roll. So, I am going to have some more songs here for you. Uh, I would, like I said, I wish I had a lot more here for, for the History Month, so I'm going to be all over the board here with music. Uh, we're not going to have any Slayer or any of that hard-hitting music today. But uh, either way, we it is rock and roll. We are going to have you going and uh, rocking and rolling. Enjoy that favorite beverage. Keep your eyes on the road. Good afternoon, everybody. We're back here. The Va- Whoa, wait a minute. Vaquero Radio, the Valley Student Station. Oh, I almost messed that one up. How, how did I do that? Okay, that was sticks. Too much time on my hands. That was Elvis, Hound Dog, and Eric Clapton, Tears in Heaven. Now, there's something about Elvis. Elvis never wrote a single 
word to any of the songs he ever, ever sung. It, it, it were all covers. He was one big, gigantic cover guy. Not take, trying to take anything away from him, but not one original thought uh, came into his songs. It was all covers. And that song, Hound Dog, was originally sung by Big Mama Thornton. And, uh, yeah, she, she uh, at the time, it, even by today's standards, she sang some pretty rich songs. Um, so, you know, Let's Get Stoned, Rolling Stone, you know, Ball and Chain. Uh, yeah, m- many more songs, that, but definitely very risk songs, even by today's standards. Uh, so that was Big Mama Thornton that sung a lot of that. I played Eric Clapton. Um, I don't have Crossroads. He actually did a song called uh, Crossroads, and it was about uh, Ro- uh, Robert Johnson down at the Crossroads. But uh, th- this is a song I had here on the radio, so I just wanted to play Eric Clapton since he sang a lot of that blues and, and uh, you know, played with Cream way back when, and uh, th- the reason they called themselves cream is because they were supposed to be the, let's see here, the cream of the crop at the time that they played. Oh, gosh, this is the fastest hour in radio broadcast out of the entire week. And, uh, well, uh, there was uh, another man. He, he was this big rock producer, Phil Spector. He, uh, d- you know, did many band. Oh, man, the, the I know Tina... Turner came from Phil Spector, R E S P E C T. Uh, oh gosh, if somebody help me out here on the Radio FX app and let me know who it is that that I'm thinking of. Anyway, Phil Spector, he he was famous for his big wall of sound that he would produce with lots of his songs and the way he played the instruments and things of that nature. It was during the time, uh, 50s, 40s, 50s, that. I guess artists really didn't have their record label. Uh, they, they had jobs. Phil Spector pretty much controlled, hey, I, I got three singing spots opened. Who wants to come sing? So people would go sing, and you would have to sing his way. If not, he just fired you, and you were gone. So there was nothing original that the singers brought in. He, he did everything. Um, he was accused of murder, and he uh, just recently died, I want to say about a year ago. But uh, despite his personal life and the troubles he had, he, he was a very uh, uh, famous, very, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, gosh, I'm just at a loss of words today. I've been writing so many papers on history lately that I'm sticking all that knowledge into the papers. He was very influential in what is modern day rock and roll today. Okay, I only got 10 minutes left. Is it really the top of the hour? Oh my goodness. Where does time go? All right, let's get some more songs here playing for you. This is Rock Kittle Radio. I am your DJ, DJ Z, your rock ambassador. I am, uh, the hour just went by really fast. That was I of the Tiger. And, of course, that was Colt's Personality by Living Color, a uh, black band real famous way back in the 90s. And, uh... Uh, they said the music was for everybody, and it's something that should be celebrated, especially rock and roll, looking at the roots of where it came from, and it's it's something that's made for everyone. All right. Now, not going to make you uh, do homework, but uh, let's see here. Robert Johnson, I already told you about him. This is an uh, artist. Look him up on your own. We're going to do Jimi Hendrix all along the Watchtower as a song that I'm going to walk out on. So uh, uh, let's see here. Um, let's, uh, but let me... It, it, Rock and roll history here. Bo Diddley. Go go look him up. John Lee Hooker. Uh, look him up. Miles Davis. Uh, he's got a real famous album out there that sounds like Witch's Brew, but it's, you know, uh, something else. It really, it just inspired so many people. Uh, of course, Ray Charles, you know, uh, Lenny Kravitz, Steve Turner, Chuck Berry, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Prince, Michael Jackson. Uh, just so many people out there that help influence our rock and roll songs. All right, I will see you all next week. Until then, have fun. And uh, don't drink and drive. You might spill something. You're going to love, use a glove. And uh, if you've got to think more than once about it, you probably shouldn't do it. I will talk to you all later. Have a safe drive home.